after careful deliberation, I have concluded that I cannot support Judge Neil Gorsuch's nomination to the Supreme Court. His nomination will have a cloture vote. He will have to earn 60 votes for confirmation. My vote will be no, and I urge my colleagues to do the same. That was Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer announcing he will not vote in favor of Supreme Court nominee Judge Neil Gorsuch, scheduled to take place early next month. Schumer has also threatened to filibuster his nomination by not allowing an up or down vote on the Senate floor. Yesterday, the Senate Judiciary Committee heard from outside witnesses, including civil rights groups, who raised questions about Gorsuch's tenure at the Department of Justice and his views on criminal justice and voting rights. We do not believe that the record is sufficient to conclude that he meets our standard, which requires demonstration of a profound respect for the importance of protecting civil rights afforded by the Constitution and the nation's civil rights laws. Judge Gorsuch's views reflect a very narrow definition of what constitutes a civil right. And he has deep skepticism about the importance of protecting those rights in the courtroom. In the confirmation hearings, questions have also been raised about whether Judge Gorsuch tends to rule in favor of big business over the little guy. Critics use the case of a Detroit trucker named Alfonso Madden, who was fired for leaving his trailer behind after breaking down in below zero weather in 2009. I contacted my employer and they arranged for a repair unit to come to my location. I expected that help would arrive within an hour. I awoke three hours later to discover that I could not feel my feet, my skin was burning and cracking, my speech was slurred, and I was having trouble breathing. After informing my employer of my physical condition, they responded by telling me to simply hang in there. As I sat there physically suffering in the cold, I started having thoughts that I was going to die. Madden managed to, de to detach the trailer from the truck's cab and left. He was fired a week later. Madden sued the company, and after seven years of fighting, he finally won. Of all the judges who heard his case, only one dissented, and that judge was Neil Gorsuch, sitting on the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals. Take a listen to how Democratic Senator Al Franken described his ruling during Gorsuch's nomination hearing. It is absurd to say this company is in its rights to fire him because he made the choice of possibly dying from freezing to death or causing other people to die possibly by driving an unsafe vehicle. That's absurd. Now, I had a career in identifying absurdity. <laughs> and I know it when I see it. And it makes me, you know, the, it makes me question your judgment. Oh, uh, let's go to our panel. Again, Rashad Robinson, Barbara Arnwine, Sir Michael Singleton, Pastor Shannon Wright, uh, as well as Kiara Kelly uh, with Interactive One on Skype. All right, folks, Barbara, I'll start with you. Um, when, when you, when you, first of all, listen to Frankie and break the whole thing down. It, it was unbelievable. Yes. And again, uh, it was very simple. This guy, freezing to death, calls the company to come and tow truck. They said, wait. He falls asleep, wakes up, can't feel his feet, Powerless. hands as well, and then they're like, no, still wait. And so uh, his brakes uh, froze. He could try to put it on the road. Now it would have been unsafe uh, for anybody else driving. And Gorsuch says, yeah, y'all could have fired him. Right. I mean, listen, Gorsuch has a problem relating to people and caring about people. When you look at the decision that came down from the Supreme Court, this week, where Justice Chief Justice Roberts smacks him down for writing this opinion on an IDA case involving a student who had autism and who uh, Gorship said that the only requirement that the court, uh, that the school district had for people with his condition was minimum the minimum education possible. And when that happened, what you saw, Roland, was that the uh, court, you know, said that he was wrong. That clearly, as any student 
a student with a disability is entitled to at least mm -hmm. a meaningful education. Now, when you can't even meet Justice Roberts' standards, there's something really wrong with you, and not to mention his love and his lauding and all of his infatuation with Hans von Spaskowski, who is a anti-voting rights act activists. So there is so many reasons why this man should go down, and I say to every single senator who's thinking about filibustering him, yes, do so. Uh, sure, Michael. Um, again, one of the biggest concerns is that here's a judge who routinely rules in favor of big business yes. uh, over uh, consumers. Well, I mean, I think looking at some of the statements that Gorsuch has made about himself and how he interprets the Constitution and the rule of law, he considers himself to be an originalist. But even Justice Scalia said, I'm a combination of originalist, originalism and contextualism, not a nut. You have to be a combination of the two, meaning in certain cases you have to apply some level of common sense sense. In the instance of the truck driver, Common I think it's fair. Yeah, would have been, right. would have been an, it would have been fair to say clearly this guy should not have stayed in the truck and potentially right. died, which risk his own life, or drive the truck with a trailer with brakes that are frozen, risking the lives of other people. Sham, and that's a scary thought where a judge says, yeah, y'all could have fired him when his options literally were to die right. or put the truck <laughs> on the road and potentially die and kill some other people, <laughs> or for him to leave that suck on the side of the road. I think in those cases, it, with the temperature and, and with the breaks in the condition that he wore, he made the common sense, larger picture correct decision. But honestly. this is a guy who is going to be on the Supreme Court, a lifetime appointment who can't even use common sense. Right. Yeah. It has no There capacity. are folks that have common sense, there are folks that have book sense, and there are folks that I have come across as specific when it comes to the law, do not use any measure but the literal. No figurative, no abstract. But, 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 but Rashad, job, but Rashad job, this the, is the Supreme Court. The job of Supreme Court justice, the highest court in the land, is that we have people that can interpret the law and set it in context for where we need to be heading as a country. And I think we should all be nervous about what's happening here and what um, the potential is for all of our rights and for the people who are making phone calls to their senators, making the demands. I urge them to keep doing that. I met with. Um, um, Senator Schumer um, um, two weeks ago along with a number of other activists and we made it very clear that Democrats need to have a backbone and so for the for the viewers who are watching right here I think that this is a moment we have to raise our voices what good is having Democrats in the Senate if they're not going to stand up in this moment stand up for folks like the truck driver but also stand up for what it represents for all of us moving forward if people want to do that they can visit my website color of change or other organizations because this is a moment where we actually have to stand strong. Kira, you have nine Democrats who are going to be up for re-election for the United States Senate in 2018. Most of them are from red states. Uh, again, uh, there's a 60 there's a 60 vote threshold, if you will. Uh, Dem Republicans don't want to uh, invoke the nuclear option when it comes to uh, Supreme Court uh, uh, nominations, uh, and so the pressure is going to be on those Democrats from red states, folks like uh, Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia, uh, as well to support Neil Gorsuch uh, nomination. Do you think those Democrats in those red states are going to go along with Senator Chuck Schumer and filibuster Gorsuch? I mean, I think they should filibuster the hell out of him. I mean, especially since they took away that right from the first black president to fill that seat. Um, I, I can't predict. I'm not sure what they're going to do, but I think they absolutely, I mean, a lot is at stake when it comes to women's rights, LGBT rights, gun legislation. There are high stakes for whoever fills that seat. So I would hope that they would filibuster um, and continue to obstruct this nomination until a more moderate candidate is put into place. They're not going to filibuster. Sure, Michael? They're, they're not going to filibuster because now you start talking about electoral viability. And if you're a Republican in West Virginia, a Democrat rather than West Virginia, you have to get reelected. And most of the people who are probably your constituents are conservative leaning, if they're Democrats, conservative leaning Democrats. So I do not expect Democrats who do represent red states to stand with Schumer on this. I just don't but, foresee but, it. But, but, but they actually don't need all the Democrats. I was about to say, that's what I was they actually just, just 
just from a technical numbers right. perspective, there's actually a whole set of Democrats they that don't actually need 60 votes. They yes. have 51 Republicans. Yes, exactly. They only I, lose I, nine Democrats. Exactly. So they can lose nine Democrats. That's that's actually the point. So there are a set of Democrats that don't have to stand that can that Schumer can say, give a pass to and say, hey, you can go and vote with this, and they are still the potential for the filibuster. So it is. It will be a close sort of number, and that's why I'm urging people to make the phone calls. But also, Democrats can't, and and the and people watching can't be tricked into this game that somehow if they if Democrats don't stand strong and don't have a backbone, that somehow like middle of the road or right or right or right of center voters are going to reward them in some way and are going to vote for them in close elections. That has actually not proven itself to be true. And so at the very least, Democrats who may go down this next election or may stand strong actually need to be able to say what they did in this historical moment right. of opposition and resistance because actually standing in the middle and hoping that like the wind doesn't hit us it has never has never proven right and in fact actually gets you caught up a peaceful protest turned deadly 37 year old black man was shot to kill by Baton Rouge police <laughs> hands are in the air and you still get shot by the cops. Oh my God, please don't tell me he's dead. We're not gonna let hate define us. Race is a big part of this. If truly all lives matter, then all lives need to matter equally. What we require is action. What we require is accountability. We understand that black lives do matter. We will keep focus on this issue. News One Now, every weekday morning at seven on TV One.